Hello, folks. We are back with this week's Unfinished Business. I am your host, Jeff Galishaw. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Andre Joseph of AJ Epics Productions. And this week, we're taking a little bit of a sidestep, so to speak. We're not going to be talking about film, or at least not a movie or movies in particular, but a television show that is inspired by a popular film franchise. That's right. We're back with a review of season four of Cobra Kai. That was released on December 31st, 2021. So me, and I'm sure Andre also, rung in the new year by binging this television show because we just couldn't wait. Now, there's a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to this show. So we'll try to do it slowly and not jump ahead. Um, you know, obviously, we all know what you were all waiting for. Just like us, the return of Terry Silver. And now, what I found interesting is... Leading up to this, I decided to do my research on Thomas Ian Griffith because I, like most people, obviously I remember him from Karate Kid 3 and I remember him from Vampires with James Wood, or excuse me, John Carpenter's Vampires with James Wood, where he played the major villain. But also, I remember him from, wow, this is like a Channel 11 movie called Excessive Force, uh. where... He played the action hero and found out he actually co-wrote the movie also. Um, and I just remember it for, uh, there's the, because Burt Young is the villain, and there's a scene in it where he has a baseball bat and he uh, is holding this guy's legs over two chairs. And I was like, that is the most, at Key Mind, this came out in 1989. I was like, this is the most effed up <laughs> violence I've ever seen in a movie. Um, and also, Thomas Ian Griffith also starred in one of my favorite action straight to HBO movies, Next to Drive, called Top of the World. If you guys can find it, definitely watch it. It has John Lithgow as oh, yeah. the villain, Donald yeah. Sutherland, Tia Carrere. It has a cynical sense of humor, but it's a kick ass action film. And, you know, Thomas Ian Griffith uh, starred in this movie. I will say, next to Terry Silver, it might be my favorite of his performances. Um, and the thing is, when I was reading up on him, I found out he trained in opera <laughs> more than anything. Uh, and then he just happened to take up karate and taekwondo. And, you know, obviously, it kind of helped serve his career more. And I did not know that he had retired from acting at a certain point and was focusing on writing uh, for television, uh, you know, that took me totally by surprise, especially finding out he actually has real credits as a TV writer. No offense to you, Mr. Uh, Thomas Ian Griffith. Um, but, you know, going through all this, I'm just like even more amazed by the man. And up, and I know it's strange, but up until this movie, I didn't quite realize how tall he was. Either. Yeah, he's <laughs> I did not know he was six foot five. Um, Still got the ponytail, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but also, I mean, I hate to say it, even though there's a lot of good stuff this season, he kind of steals the show, uh, you know, but again, just the way his character is written, he was born to, I like that he referenced all the stuff from Karate Kid 3, oh, I was so high on cocaine, you know, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. you know, the toxic waste stuff, you know, and I'm not going to lie. At one point when he was making a call and he seemed to be arranging something, I was kind of hoping he was calling Snake <laughs> from Karate <laughs> Kid 3. I was like, Snake's coming? <laughs> oh, yeah! Uh, but anyway, enough about me talking about, <laughs> you know, his character. Okay, what was your first impression in the early episodes of uh, Cobra Kai? 
Well, right away. I mean, it was just, you could tell they poured more money into it, unlike the previous seasons. Now you feel like these characters are more fleshed out. You're more invested in the stories of the kids and seeing how Daniel and Johnny don't see eye to eye with their different styles of karate. It really was fun to see them like try to switch places you know like when Johnny starts training Daniel then Daniel trying to train Johnny but Johnny can't get into all the kata and meditating and just like the way he handles it I thought was sometimes disgusting and other times very hilarious Thomas saying Griffith was great I really like like you said like explaining his whole backstory of the years after Karate Kid Part 3 where he's been but more importantly than that he doesn't jump into Kreese's arms right away and he's going to be glad to help. You see like him trying to live this normal life. Like, you know, I'm doing well. I got my money. I got my wife and whatever. And I don't need your help right now. But then you see that old side of him come back and it becomes more vindictive as it goes along. Like some of the stuff he did, especially near the end of this season was really brutal i mean like i was kind of shocked with where the show was going because at times you get thrown off by the humor that when it gets dramatic and brutal like that it's pretty damn eye-opening um you know we'll get into all that stuff later on but he was just through and through a huge plus to this show which was already doing well but him being added to the mix and creating more controversy and more complication for Daniel and Johnny's dojos only made it that much more interesting. Um, I have to say, I was in love with his wine cellar. <laughs> as soon as they showed that, I was just like, can we just like do more scenes here? Because I want to stay in this wine cellar. Um, but, and seriously, um, one of the aspects I liked about this season is that this season starts to show other sides to characters we have already kind of thought of as one way, which is what this show was built upon because the show is built, we're supposed to see Johnny's point uh, point of view as to everything in the beginning, at least in the first season. And, you know, like this season, we see, you know, Crease actually might not be 100% evil. I mean, last uh, season we learned about his backstory more, but now modern day we're actually seeing, oh my God, he might actually have more to him or he might be a human being still in there. And I admired that. Um, I liked that we get to see another side of Tori instead of her just being angry all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that we get to see uh, LaRusso's wife actually... <laughs> have something really to do other than chastise and talk to Johnny's girlfriend. You yeah, know, it was interesting with her and you could see the through line in the whole season where it's like, everybody's got daddy issues and everybody's kind of dealing with it in their own way. So when she gets into her whole story about her upbringing and her difficult relationship with her dad and why she, that connects with her wanting to help Tori, it gave her more dimension. She wasn't like, you know, comedical character but we're starting to get to know more about amanda larusso that she's not just there to be the wife there there's a lot more interesting things going on there um another thing that i liked about this season is that they brought back a lot of fan favorite characters who seem to have disappeared yep. or really they may might not have had a reason for them to even be on the show anymore even um uh, I think it's Daniel LaRusso's cousin, uh, the idiot mm -hmm. who works at his shop. They found a way to bring him back. And even though he thinks he's sly, Ralph Macchio, I know that was your daughter playing yeah, your right. cousin's <laughs> child psychiatrist. I don't think I didn't notice that. Um, I Look, you know, also, it's uh, – I'm sorry, Ralph Macchio, but – this season really showed it's obvious Thomas Ian Griffith is younger than Ralph Macchio. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just like, wow. Yeah. One <laughs> ate well, one didn't. Um, or not as well. Um, but that's a nitpick, you know. 
Sorry, I'm not trying to, you know, be like, I'm not trying to be the bitchy girl. Like, oh my, look at who's older. Um, <laughs> another thing, because I don't want to get into the cameos so much until later. I mean, it seems like it's going with the tradition on this show where it's like, guess what? They're going to be cameos from the past. I still say, where's my man? Where's my man, Larry B. Scott? Yeah. He was a black over guy. Just saying. That's what I'm saying. Um, I also like that we see more of kind of an evil or bitchier side to Samantha LaRusso's character. Yeah. Which ironically is after this speech given, okay, spoiler alert, given by Aisha, her old friend, about like, you know, seeing maybe the other side of people or trying to be friends with them. And she does the exact opposite, <laughs> you know. I was happy to see Aisha back, but I will make one nitpick about her scene. It felt like a PSA. I'll admit, yes, I can I can agree with that. But again, this is a teen show. Sometimes it needs some PSA in this show. Yeah, and, and speaking of teen like teen shows, there's the other interesting aspect of this season we haven't covered yet, which is Daniel's son. Because throughout the whole series, we've seen I was that, waiting to get to that, but okay, go, let's go. Yeah, we've seen that the young son is just glued to video games. He's not into karate. They made him a real asshole this year because he's a little bit older and he's bullying the brother of the black kid that was targeting Robbie Lawrence in the Juvie Center. And you yep. kind of like that kid at the beginning until he joins Cobra Kai and little by little he starts to turn, you know, that that was probably one thing that I thought was very gripping this year. Well, I agree, but my thing is also a little of that was it's the only time I felt like the series got a little heavy handed because like, OK, we get it. You know, like now it's sort of like uh I forget his uh, uh, Daniel LaRusso son's name. Anthony? I think it's Anthony LaRusso. Yeah, like he's kind of, I wouldn't say the Johnny, but he can't really fight, uh, <laughs> you know? And, you know, the other kid could have been the Daniel, you know, learning to just defend himself. But I thought it was gripping because, A, we finally get another minority character on the show. <laughs> and, you know, the whole thing with, you know, his... um brother you know being in jail and you know him blaming himself for it because at first we're not sure because they just say don't we want to make sure you just don't end up like your brother and, you know and then it's like oh and then is this character and i like that they at least kept that character tough because one of my biggest complaints was in the first season robbie's like old friends were seen as these tough guys but then in season two when Johnny and Daniel go to prison, they're more like buffoons. And, you know, like all the toughness is taken from them. So this, at least they were thorough with this character. And like you said, I think it was, they really hammered home, you know, especially towards more the end of the season, how this parallels Robbie. And it can also parallel Johnny and Daniel with this like kind of friendship, relation, mentor-mentee uh, relationship. And I'm wondering if maybe more next season, it's more going to be like, you know, uh, Terry's character is going to have more influence over him because spoiler, even though it's at the end of the season, we kind of see Robbie seeing the evils of his ways. Yeah. Finally, even though he says, Oh, I'm just using them, but he sees like, Oh, this might've gone too far. Even uh -huh. for me, you know, I'm also glad that I don't know if this was a direction, but I'm glad that Robbie kept his mouth shut more this season. Than <laughs> you know, maybe it's it goes with the haircut, uh, you know. And I like the thorough line of Miguel because even at the beginning of the season, he seems distracted and it plays all through the season, you know, where he's not sure of certain things. He's always on the middle ground, uh, uh, you know, throughout the whole season. Mm. So I like that, you know, they included that. And again, I mean, my thing is with Anthony Russo, can they make him maybe a little less? He was already annoying in previous seasons. And even here, you know, even when he tries to make amends, he's still annoying, uh, you oh, know. Yeah. So it's like uh, this, this this little douchebag. He needs uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, 
he, he's 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 like that character like what was it joffrey on game of thrones he's not that evil but it's just something you just don't like about him <laughs> and then even when they get rid of his character who like somebody who's even worse you're like well, okay maybe he wasn't that bad <laughs> you know and that's how it feels like watching you know this season um but you know so many good things i'm trying to I'm trying to pick out like the thorough lines where we have to go with this, uh, you know. What about in- with Hawk? Because it was interesting what happens with him, you know, where okay. he's like still a badass from the start until, you know, they cut off his hair and he feels like he's a shell of himself up until the very end. Like he ends up, you know, learning from Daniel a lot more this year to where he, little by little, him and Dimitri become close again. And it's like, he suddenly softens up. Well, I like that, but I also felt this is again, where it goes with the heavy handed with the other, you know, little black kid in Cobra Kai. Like even when he's just having a Cobra Kai t-shirt and all these like Miyagi and Eagle of Death Metal, whatever, uh, Eagle (laughs) Fang, they just like treat him like shit just because he has a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I like that the show kind of also admits its ridiculousness that all of this is all, everything is decided by these gang of like <laughs> dojos in the valley, <laughs> you know, like the these lights, but martial arts instead of football. It pretty much, and you know, even when you have like in the trailer, they tried to make this like meeting of all the heads of the county into this big thing. Then you watch the show, and it's more comedic, you know, with that God help us all. And it's like, you know, they're more like just like, hey, we need to set rules, and we're gonna use this to have our little petty arguments, you know, stuff like that. And I was just like, and I, you know, I even like. Again, of course, because everything has to be brought back from the two movies. I even like that Johnny uh, remarks on how Daniel got passed through <laughs> without <laughs> having <laughs> to like face anyone. Where I take it Johnny did not get that same pass when he fought. You know, so I like like little aspects like that. Um, and you know, as always, Miguel's mom, major hottie. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, I'm trying to think what other things. Um, oh, of course, major spoiler if you haven't seen it the return of Paul Walter Hauser yes. as Stingray. I was it, very pleased with that one, and I like that he came back, but it they made his role pivotal rather than just be a fan favorite character who right. just comes out of nowhere, like, hey guys, I'm back. In other words, instead of making him Poochie <laughs> from Simpsons, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, yay, we actually have something for you to do other than just be comic relief for once, you know. Um, you know, um, what is I, the scene other than, you know, the scenes with uh, the Black Cobra Kai kid that really affected me the most is when Tori actually has kind of a change of heart during her match and actually okay spoiler wants to go and see if samantha's okay but then her team is so excited takes her away i yeah. thought that was a strong especially seeing how bitchy tori or how hell bent and angry tori has been throughout all of her seasons on the show though i know why they did it but again it was a little heavy-handed with the aunt coming out of nowhere like yeah don't forget where you're going dude you know, yeah, like that was like a one-time occurrence, and then there was no um, callback or payoff. It, was, it just seemed like we're gonna just have her show up just to screw with her head. Exactly, and then have a reason for why uh, she goes talks to the Larusos. You know, um, but I, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, please don't let her mom be Hillary Swank. Please do not let that. No, be. I don't think so. It, it I Robin not. Lively. I don't know. <laughs> I'd, I'd prefer that. <laughs> that would be interesting, knowing the history. Um, you know, I'm like, you know, I mean, obviously everybody's writing to, you know, the showrunners, like, bring this character back, bring this random character back, bring this random character back. Um, I don't want to spoil the end, but it just shows as bad as you thought it could be or get, it could get worse, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. I, I appreciated that aspect. 
And, you know, bringing back another fan favorite character. We don't know exactly in what form, but it sets it up for next season, you know. So I'm looking forward to, of course, because, you know, I love this. I'll admit, this season brought a tear to my eye towards the end, Uh, (laughs) you know, which as much as I liked the previous season, it didn't. It didn't have the same effect on me. You know, this season I was definitely like I felt it more. And, you know, I still stand by that. I'll admit it gets stronger towards the end, you know, but it also at the heart of it, it still shows even being friendly. Johnny and Daniel can just they're always going to butt heads no matter what, because they yeah, they, they even make the joke. Uh, Johnny and Miguel about Rocky three, how Rocky had to work with Apollo to beat Glover Lang. So, so far, their relationship is nothing like Apollo and Rocky. They're, they're not hugging and, you know, all happy going. No, they still have that animosity, but it is the walls are cracking. You could tell to where it's like one can't dominate over the other, and they have common enemies that force them to be in the spot where, yeah, we have to combine our forces here. True. I even liked the ridiculous watermelon kick, Uh, you know, talk about impossible final moves, and then Miguel can't even do it. (laughs) that was a shocker. (laughs) You know, like, he's in the middle, like, oh, I was like, damn, we're going to just take out Miguel again, (laughs) like that. Um, No offense, I always kind of feel sorry for Miguel, because it's like, now... Uh, obviously, uh, Tori wants Robbie. Sam still has a thing for Robbie. And Miguel's still over here like, yo, what about me? And, you know, I got problems, mm-hmm. you know. And he's still supportive. And, yo, can they make the Asian Cobra Kai guy any more of a dick? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. And I'm like, Sam, you used to date this guy? <laughs> it's like, come on, Really? And then, I don't know, weird teen eye candy. Uh, you know, Dimitri's like the girl, the most popular girl. Now, all of a sudden, is all over him. Yeah, <laughs> you know? what's up with that? <laughs> exactly, and Hawk looks like he might be able to get back with his ex, too. Uh, you know, so it was like, you know, it was a good season. You know, I'm not going to, yeah. I have, I don't have too many complaints. Not, the most important, even though you said Aisha felt like a PSA, it none of the cameos or returns felt like when Elizabeth Shue came. It didn't feel like this is what the fans want to see. So we're just gonna put them in there and in whatever shape or form we can. Uh, you know. What about the Carrie Underwood cameo where she sings "Moment of Truth" by Survivor? That was the only part of the show where I was so tempted to fast forward. Me too. <laughs> yes, I, I almost wanted to fast forward it until. The music started to hit. Then you see the montage play. It's like, okay, this is not too bad. But I prefer, well, I know the guy from Survivor died, the one, the singer. But they, they could have picked anybody else for that. Why? Because That's like the I, house when they got Macy Gray for one episode. Like, can we get somebody a little more current or get Sean Mendez or something? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean Mendez. No, but I can understand why. Well, we had D. Snyder. <laughs> so they're like, let's drag out Joe Esposito in a wheelchair saying you're the best around. No, they did. Ca- well, she's she's middle America. She sells. So they were like, hey, nobody. It's not like anybody's ever said, yo, Carrie Underwood's a bitch. And so she's she's kind of like controversy free, uh, you know, and. <laughs> Netflix could put the budget for Peter Cetera. They referenced him. <laughs> they re- oh yeah, I, I'd wanna I'd wanna go on a show after Johnny told me Peter C- Cetera sucks. <laughs> Is I say you know who we can always call, and uh, he's probably busy, but you know we can always call Michael McDonald. <laughs> you know yeah, why not? Doing, yeah, that'd be fun. We're doing 1980, so I'm like, hey, <laughs> Michael McDonald. Let him hit them soulful notes. Let's do a Yacht Rock episode. No. no, I wouldn't put it past them since they love living in the past and trying to bring it into the present. Look at all the groups they used in the soundtracks. It was um, Peter Cetera, Little River Band, 
the Jets, new edition. I mean, that you can't beat all that. Like, do an 80s episode with all those guys performing it like a prom or something. Are you trying to say that's how bad their careers are? That <laughs> they'd all appear at one prom? <laughs> hey, it's a payday. Netflix can fit the bill. <laughs> I, I would have liked to have seen New Edition doing the Journey song. It's, but only if Bobby Brown's included. It's, Paul it's, Abdul could show up, do all the dance. Well, chorus. I noticed they did not use her choreography <laughs> in, the, in the, any of these. Da- any bad dancing. Oh, the prom. That could have been perfect for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still hoping... For whoever got their nose broken, in part. I was gonna say that. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> like you broke my nose, man. <laughs> Being like that kid from uh, was it better off dead? Days. Where's my two dollars? <laughs> <laughs> He'll just always be showing up at Daniel Larusso with a class action lawsuit. You broke my nose, man. It never healed back. Hey, I wouldn't put it past Terry's character to find him. Yeah, to just... find that kid and bankrupt the car dealership. Exactly. That man is vindictive. <laughs> so, you know, in somewhere, Mike Barnes is like, you know, I'm still free. <laughs> you know, With my 50% of the dojos. Exactly. Especially now that you're going worldwide with it, uh, you know, is like, hey, Mike Barnes, I'm just like, every. My question, are they going to bring in the monks from the next Karate Kid? And They're probably dead. They have descendants. <laughs> You're telling me there were no younger monks that came in and learned from them? And, hey, they were hanging with Mr. Miyagi, so you would think Daniel would have kept in close with, you know, all of Mr. Miyagi's friends and family. If you bring the monks in, then you got to bring in Michael Ironside, and he's got to like work with Terry Silver. He could be not? Terry Silver security. Shoot, he could be he could be grown up snake. <laughs> <laughs> I hey, why not? <laughs> hey, yeah, another they track that kid down. They, I think they can find Joshi Avildsen's son. <laughs> I don't think he's hard to find. He's not like. I I moved to Peru into a jungle after my, they did not call my father to come back. <laughs> I highly doubt that. <laughs> so I am like, I am all for, you know, the returns. The guy's name is Snake. <laughs> this is like next to Razor Fist, the most obvious henchman name. <laughs> Come on. This stuff writes itself sometimes. It does. I'm like, not to mention, can we, do you think Terry's secretary is still alive? And we could bring her back. Oh, she's probably dead too. If I have her daughter. Well, she could, I'm just saying, she could fight Mama. See, and that's the other thing. Whenever I hear Mama LaRusso, I automatically think of Daniel's mother. <laughs> 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 And she's there for a hot five seconds. And I still don't understand why she doesn't like his wife. They need to bring back Daniel's asshole friend when he first moved to Reseda. And then he oh, the one who ditched him after he got his ass. Yeah. Where yeah. the hell is he? Probably still living in Reseda. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you a question because you're more the karate kid expert than I was. They show the scene, a lunchroom scene, where Daniel sits on, I guess, chocolate or whatever, and then puts it on Johnny's sweater and retaliation. Was that in the original movie, or is that an outtake? It's It's an outtake. Um, Okay. It's in a lot of publicity still. In fact, I had the novelization of The Karate Kid when I was younger, and they had the picture of that scene on the back. It was deleted. I don't know why, maybe pacing or something, but that was one of the few deleted scenes I had. That and another scene where Johnny like confronts Daniel by his locker and he pushes him against it and he wants to fight him. But this was after they made that agreement not to fight before the tournament. Okay. Mm. You can find um, it on yeah. YouTube, both scenes. Uh, okay, because I was just wondering. I'm like, I don't remember any of this. Dude, when they started showing up a like- lot of stuff we never saw before. Okay, because I was like, yo, where's this flash coming from? I'm like, I know I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but I don't remember the scene at all. 
And I mean, cool that they could use it in the way that they yeah. did. I'm just wondering, do you think Terry, well, again, this was more revenge on Daniel, but do you think he's going to make anybody like break boards, like make his fist bleed? <laughs> I'm shocked they didn't do it this year, but I feel like once, if Mike Barnes shows up, they're going to try to work that in. Maybe for the black kid, I think he's going to be the recipient of that. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be a future rivalry between Robbie and the Black Kid? And I feel like they're building to something because he's going to have that chip on his shoulder. Like Robbie will probably be a little bit redeemed, but he's not. He was probably going to get knee deep into it. I mean, it's like a classic uh, origin story for a villain. So I, I don't think he's going to be redeemed that quickly. And do you think maybe the special guest star at the end of the season in the last scene, do you think he might be himself kind of a Terry where, you, you know, now he's supposedly reformed from his old ways, but now that, you know, Daniel's kind of bringing him back in, he could go back to his over the top ways. I didn't think about that, but it's a possibility, you know, that character that comes in, we might think they're going to have an alliance and you know maybe he'll fight Johnny at some point. I wouldn't put that past me, but there, there could be a twist there. He may not be as forgiving as we thought he was. And well, we have to wait for Johnny to come back from Mexico. And, you know, they need a big star to play Miguel's dad. And I don't know who they get. <laughs> You're not going to like my suggestion, but he also might be busy because he's starring in another series. Who don't he Phillips? Who? Lou Diamond Phillips. I didn't even think of him. He's not bad, <laughs> especially if he's in the big hit mode. <laughs> <You know? laughs> if he's paid. Paid up, exactly. I will go for him with the gold tooth. <laughs> um, but I was going to say Louis Guzman. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, why not? He can do drama. He can do comedy. <laughs> Could you see Miguel's mom go with him to have Hello? a Hello? He was he was sexier back then. He let himself go a little. <laughs> what about like A. Martinez or Jimmy Smith or somebody like that? Jimmy Smith? <laughs> How old was he when he met Miguel's mom? <laughs> what was he, already a grandpa? <laughs> who's Latino in the 80s that could fight? I don't know, Issa Morales? I, I can't hey, think of who he's he was. always get. free. <laughs> you don't want my answer. I say... Gerardo. <laughs> Who? Gerardo. Rico Suave. <laughs> what? Hey, he has acting experience. <laughs> okay. And Creole? No, he was in Can't Buy Me Love. <laughs> A million to one. <laughs> I'm just saying, he has acting experience. Emilio, that's the best. <laughs> As long as it has nothing, as long as there's no COVID rules, Emilio Estevez will be there. Carlos Estevez, Charlie G. <laughs> Since he's finally, come on, you don't want to see William Zabaka and Charlie Sheen meet in a movie? <laughs> that it would be awesome. <laughs> see, I, we're writing our own series right here. It's Edward James Holmes. <laughs> is, hey, this is like Charlie Sheen's triumph, Carlos Estevez's triumphant return to television. It's in this season of Cobra Kai. <laughs> but he's going to want top billing. It's, 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 I'm just saying. It's, I'm spitballing here. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> I still like Lou Diamond Phillips, though. <laughs> that does seem like a bad choice. He would fit. I I am for it. I mean, if Val Kilmer can play Native American, it's under <laughs> our, <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips. Or if you, oh, no, this is even worse than Jimmy Smith. I was about to say, or you could go with Edward James almost. I just said <laughs> Edward James almost. I'm oh, sorry. I'm like, I was still in my fancy casting league in my head. I'm like, I'm just trying to, I'm I'm going for every 80s. Hispanic. We're going way off. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm like, we're just, we're going through memory lane here. Like, hey, what happened to that guy? 
Julio like, Iglesias. Yeah. No, Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> Enrique. <laughs> he was a. He was in <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Oh, my God. Why not Antonio Banderas, the biggest Mexican you've ever seen? I don't think <laughs> get a, Netflix could afford Antonio Banderas. They just paid how much for all these movies? You don't think they could be like, Cobra Kai, you want an Antonio Banderas? We got it. <laughs> You know, why not? What? He's too busy being in Steven Soderbergh movies? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> um, the, please don't say Steven Bauer. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I'm like, well, we know he's free. <laughs> so, <laughs> and nothing says 80s like Steven Bauer. Oh, yeah. As long as never put Scott Bayo on the show. It's, oh God, no! I'm like, no, sorry, no. I don't even think he's Spanish. No, I'm just saying, just in general, in any way. <laughs> he could have been uh, like uh, Daniel Larusso's cousin. <laughs> he has to like throw back to his role in Foxes with the skateboard, but then he dies after getting hit off of that skateboard. <laughs> 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 Hey, I'm willing to film it. <laughs> Be like, yeah, the stunt double didn't show up today. <laughs> You'll have to do it yourself. <laughs> okay, also, just a disclaimer, I am not wishing death upon Scott Bayo. No, no. <laughs> I just want that clear. But we have gotten way off subject. We way off. <laughs> it's like, so let's... Povich. So let's bring it back. Is there any uh, plotline or aspect of this season we did not talk about? Um, that you can think of? Mm. We did talk about like how they updated the tournament, but there's really not much to say. Like, that was like the big thing they were hyping up in the trailer was it was going to be this big thing. All it was was just, oh, we're, we're doing like the movie sidekicks. They're going to use weapons and they're going to do like demonstrations. That was really it. There, there wasn't anything spectacular. That, like, oh, my God, they changed the tournament forever. Um, the only thing the tournament did was add other characters that they can use in future seasons for jokes or background players yeah. while shrinking the other bit actors roles even more like the black guy who's part of Miyagi, though. He really has no locks <laughs> this season. You know, even like the little geeky kid and the other geeky Asian kid, they had a few more scenes, but really it was like, hey, we're picking on you because you got a Cobra Kai t-shirt. And no offense, Cobra Kai's design is way cooler. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like Miyagi though. Uh, Eagle Fang, yeah, Johnny, you well, got Eagle Fang's intended to look cheap. Yes, and you could have picked... But they could have picked a better graphic designer. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, even when they got their uniforms, I was like, yo, those, I'm not, you know, Cobra guy, but I'm like, those boxes are hot. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> I like the colors on them. Yeah, because it's like, oh, man. But can anything look more like Cobra from G.I. Joe, though? <laughs> <laughs> but still, this is better than Snake Eyes. Um, so, yes. so. Um, I think that's pretty much it for, you know, everything that happened the season and what we're hoping happens next season and our very strange casting <laughs> uh, diatribes. <laughs> uh, so uh, anything you're hoping for next season that maybe we didn't mention? Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Barnes, Snake, Robin Lively's character, at least a hint to Hillary Swank coming in. And if they get a big name star to play Miguel's death. I I agree, though. I think if Hillary Swank comes, she should come with the monks. Like maybe having gone off with them. And, you know, now she, or that's a good reference for the monks. Like after, you know, Mr. Miyagi dies, she went on a spiritual retreat. Now she's back in some capacity. I don't know how because you guys didn't hire me to write for the show. So I can't say. But I, I do want to see Johnny and this returning character fight. It would be interesting, because I still kind of want Johnny to fight Terry. Too. Yeah, well, I think they're, they're going to set up for that. Um, 
I also am hoping there will be more Martin Cove. And yeah. I'm like, because, you know, I finally felt like he finally got off of that one note. <laughs> and they finally let him play some others, you know, because I'm like, it, it, it was one note for a bit there. Um, I'm also kind of hoping, I know we can't bring back the old crew because unfortunately one passed away, rest in peace. But maybe see the old crew kind of come back again, you know. Bring back Chad McQueen. I mean, come on. What are you doing, Chad McQueen? If you got a disability, just do one scene. You can even do it on Zoom like we do. <laughs> hey, I'm just like, bring back him, Larry B. Scott. I'm still holding out hope. Please bring him back, hey, you know. like He's around if, somewhere. Like, if they, well, no, then that would have been too connected. Because I was going to say, he could have even played the kid's dad in the Army. And that would have been cool to see, yeah. You know, um, I don't think he would have like, wait, you're in Cobra Kai. That's my old dojo. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would have totally fit. Exactly. I'm just wondering if maybe in the future, also maybe future season, if his brother's going to get out of juvie finally and then play some kind of part in all of this. I so far, so. really. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is. With action. We're not <laughs> done with him. No, I hope not. Because if you're going to bother referencing him, you should do something. Just like I kind of, like you said, I'd like to see Aisha return without the public service announcement. Like, have mm-hmm. something really to do. Uh, you know. Yeah, so, I thought she would help the Eagle Fang and be like the last girl that they got. No. I knew as soon as we saw her in that house and so uh, supposedly so far out of where they live... I'm like, yeah, she's not going to return full time. Uh, you know, if anything, this is, you know, fan favorite moment. And, um, but unfortunately, that ends this business for this week. But as you know, we always have unfinished business. But before we go, have you seen just one of the guys? If not, why not? Because it's fucking awesome. Andre, what? movie do you want the people to see that you think is fucking awesome i'm actually going to recommend a tv show instead of a movie today have you seen dope sick on hulu if not why not because it's fucking awesome all right that's a change of pace and goes with them a theme and that is it for this week's episode we shall see you all again sometime soon